Welcome to Improv Separately Together. I'm your host, Philip Whiting. This week, coming from Jacksonville, we have Lyra! So excited to be here! Uh, thank you. In Jacksonville. Yes! <laughs> and in South Carolina at the same time. Ooh, it's magic. It's a really <laughs> weird way to do it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, thank you for coming on the show. No, thank you for having me. I'm actually very honored to be a guest this week. Awesome. I'm honored to have you. Um, oh. Want from you, let me, if I can speak correctly, it would come out better for you guys. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Well, as Philip said, my name is Lyra Hall. I actually originally am from St. Louis, Missouri, uh, the show me state. I've been in Jacksonville, Florida for about 15 years. Oh, wait. Yeah, 17 years. Oh my goodness. Okay, sorry. You know, in this day and age, time is kind of going in a weird spectrum. So no, um, I've been in Jacksonville 17 years. Um, I've been with Mad Cowford Improv for 10 years. This summer was my 10 year anniversary. Um, I am also in a group called More Cowbell, which we do musical long form improv. I also am in a group um, called Spotlight Giant and also a duo called Evening Chill with a friend of mine named Jess Laxer. Um, so yeah, so I've done a lot of improv. I love it. It's a good release, stress reliever from um, my day-to-day -day grind. Um, I'm in sales, which, you know, I don't have the personality for because I don't <laughs> like people. Uh, no. Um, yeah, so I'm in sales. I actually um, am in government sales. I sell consumer goods to federal, state, local prisons and jails. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's good work if you can get it. Um, yeah. And, um, you get to go inside prisons and actually leave. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, but no, I do love it. I've been in the industry, um, with two different organizations for about 20 years. So I guess, I, I guess I like it. Um, so yeah, but, um, I also, yeah, I don't know. I just, um, like I said, I love doing improv. I love doing my job. Um, I live in this wonderful condo in Jacksonville, Florida. Today's been a glorious day. And um, sadly, I'm here um, on my own because my siblings are in St. Louis and in Maryland. So I don't get to see them very much. But um, it's, um, it's, Florida has treated me very well. So. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? Whatever Probably you... Probably more, but I'm not going to right now. Whatever you like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, with this show, I'm just uh, catching up with mostly our improvisers. There's been a few that were not improvisers. Um, but I'm just basically seeing how they've been doing during this whole thing, basically, I guess, since March. Um, so I'm just going to basically ask you about five questions. Okay. And uh, when you're ready to jump into it, tell me. Sure. Hey, I'm I'm ready as I'm ever going to be. Good. Because an improv, you just let it happen. <laughs> we can't plan for anything, can we? No, not even a pandemic. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say yes and. Perfect. All right. Okay. So since the uh, coronavirus started, what changed in your day to day? And you you can actually start from March because that's when the things actually changed. Yeah. Well, I will say this. So, um, March 13th was probably my landmark day when it came to the pandemic, because this was a time where we knew it was happening. We knew that it was, it had hit the United States. We weren't really that concerned about it down here in Florida as the Florida man is never concerned with anything. <laughs> um, but I actually happened to be on a road trip. So I was uh, visiting a prison in Puerto Rico and um, it takes usually all day to get there, um, getting up in the morning and flying from Jacksonville to Fort Lauderdale or Miami and then going on to Puerto Rico. So I was going through that and, you know, you know, you're in the airport and you're seeing but people with masks on, which is not normal. Um, so that was kind of a new reality, the kind of thing it really was hitting me. I packed my sanitizer, I'm wiping down the airplane seats, I'm in a rental car, which seemed like I was just in my own incubus of just bacteria. I wore disposable gloves in the rental car. I felt very awkward, um, to say the least, as if 
I was a, really a great germaphobe. But I knew this is a precaution I needed to take just because we really didn't know how bad this was going to get. So um, I remember I was coming back Friday. I was in the airport in Puerto Rico on the way back to Jacksonville, and they were having a sales meeting. Um, sorry, wait, I take it back. On Thursday, they had a sales meeting while I had just landed in Puerto Rico. And the whole company said, we are halting all business travel, effective immediately. Do not get on an airplane. And my coworkers were like, but Lira is in Puerto Rico right now. And they're like, oh. And for a second there, I thought, are they going to, like, somehow, like, am I going to get stuck down here? Am I going to fly back? Am they going to, like, silkwood me? Like, make when I come to the office, it's going to get, like, I'm going to get hosed down with an industrial <laughs> fire hose? I didn't know. Because um, they made it, it seems scarier when, you know, you're not in the office hearing all these things. So, anyway, I came back. Um, obviously, I didn't get the silkwood treatment. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry if you don't know the reference. But, um it seemed like things had changed overnight only with that one decision of our company that we no longer could travel. So, um, it then turned into these kind of last minute preparations. Our company is not one in which we work from home we were working in an office. So now it's like, we need to make sure everyone's got their laptop, make sure you have your software and your internet is up to date. You got to do da. And so it kind of became this mad rush to what I felt like was preparing for some sort of work apocalypse. Um, so from then on, my daily life changed. You know, I stopped going to the office um, on the daily basis. I was working from home on Tuesdays and Fridays, every Thursday, every other Thursday, just so we didn't have everyone in the office at the same time. So one coworker I never saw for three or four months. And that was kind of bizarre because yeah. a lot can happen in three to four months. So, um, and it, it, you take things for granted, like, I'm just going to head out the door and get something for lunch at this restaurant. Right. And that was not going to be a normal process at all. So it really kind of, uh, you know, it made me stop and think of all the things that I do take for granted. I realized that I would not be able to go just hop on a plane and go visit my sister or my niece. Um, so, but as someone, I've always been someone who's gotten along by myself pretty well. So the being alone, you know, working from home wasn't the problem. It was the fact that if something happens, I'm kind of straight. I can't, I can't help somebody, right. you know? So that was kind of different for me. A little. <laughs> a, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of little. A lot of, <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, let's think about, how we're all home even right now we're all home more often than we used to be Um, yes what do you like about that i don't have to make excuses as to why i don't want to be happy that's i love the fact that i don't have to like you know i'd love to come to your house for a party but i was really going to go through my drawer and get some donations together for goodwill or i don't have to go oh yeah, that new band that is playing music that I would never listen to is playing. You want me to go see them? Yeah, you know what? I would love to go when I got a doctor's appointment for my ears and I don't want to, you know. So I didn't have to come up with excuses as right. to why I was not going to go somewhere. So that was, I felt like, that's one thing that I benefited from. <laughs> that's, I mean, even now you can be like, uh, pandemic? <laughs> it's surprising how you have to remind people of that actually no um, no it's so. not <laughs> it's like, like did you yeah you realize there's a pandemic hey right. that's why <laughs> okay so on the other side of that question is what do you dislike about being home so much <sighs> well I will say this thankfully I'm back to work full time so at least I'm leaving to go to the office every day. Um, so what I dislike about this is I can no longer freely make doctor's appointments and use my lunch hour to go to the doctor. I can no longer freely like say, oh, you know, maybe I should fix, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, in the bathroom right. um, and tinker with that while I'm, you know, 
waiting for this return phone call. There's things around the house that I could be doing while I'm working that I can't do anymore. So now I'm spending them, spending my weekend right. doing these things that I don't want to do. Exactly. So, um, yeah, the laundry's backing up. You know, I could throw a load in and get, you know, and then be okay. But now it's just Saturday and Sundays. I hid my laundry basket. I literally have a, a basket full of clothing that needs to be folded and put up and it's not happening. So <laughs> I literally, we, I literally will be wearing clothes from the basket this whole week. I don't care. No one's here. Who cares? But now you guys know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I right. am not as put together as I see. <laughs> <sighs> this is all a charade. It's all a facade. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, think about the one thing that you're missing more than anything. Um... I think the one thing I'm missing, I mean, honestly, this might seem cliche, especially for this, for the show. The one thing I miss more than anything is actually performing improv live in front of a studio. <laughs> Did I just, I almost said live from a studio audience. Okay. SNL dreams, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I do miss performing live in front of an audience and I really miss performing with my, my improv group. Right. Um, there are people, like, I haven't done musical improv in so long, I, I fear that I may no longer know how to sing. Not that I was that great to begin with, but I'm just saying. Um, so it's that kind of thing that I do miss. I miss my people. I miss my, my fellow improvisers. And I, I tell you what, I, I miss festivals. That's for sure. I mean, I think during this pandemic, we, we had to pass up uh, Orlando. Um, I think Miami will would have been what I think in November, maybe I don't know. I can't remember. Was it? I think it was. It was October. It's one of them. Regardless, there are improv festivals going on all year round, yeah. so we've missed these. Right. And I would actually like to do over my birthday, which was in June. <laughs> no party, no cake, nothing. No festival. So. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But no, the most the thing I miss the most is improv. I mean, honestly. And um, it's actually funny because when I decided on the questions I was going to use for the show, I'm like, oh yeah, everyone's going to say performing. I was absolutely wrong. Don't get me wrong. There's people that that is a thing, but I was getting things like a nice steak dinner, and I was like, <laughs> hugs, uh, you know. And I was like, I, I mean, it all it all made sense to me, but I was all like thought all you guys were going to say performing. <laughs> well, because I guess for me, in a sense, there, those are things I can compromise on. Like a steak, first of all, I can order a steak and have it delivered, or I can make my own steak. Um, also, I'm not opposed to eating in a restaurant by myself with no one near me. So <laughs> I'm not missing out on a steak. Right. Um, and also, I mean, I, I, I guess... It is sad that I'm not saying I miss seeing my um, my family, but they're in another state anyway. I mean, I, I see them once or twice a year at best. Right. So um, I I did miss my niece's birthday. That, that I was not happy about that. So, um, but yeah, I want to say the most, because again, I'm thinking about my regular routine and normally I'd be doing a show once a week, you know, um, at least once a week, an improv show, and then a musical show at least once a month. So that is one thing I do miss. Um, because again, there's nothing really, we can do Zoom shows all day, but there's really nothing better than getting that live feedback from an audience member or seeing the look on their face yep. um, when they get the joke internally yep. and they're not laughing, but you know they got it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I, I always say there's nothing like feeding off the energy of the audience. <laughs> exactly and that would be the correct way to put it yes <laughs> all right so uh, a lot of things have opened up um what is, do you feel is the safest thing for you to go out and do i mean the safest thing that i have been doing have been uh going out to the beach and just doing beach walks because you're out in the open and you're spaced far apart from people anyway and so, like, like my friend Jazz and I, we will go do beach walks. Um, so we're not close to each other, 
Um, we like to walk through the, the neighborhoods and there's a lot of people out there, you know, as far as like, at, you know, they're sitting on their porches. So like we're nowhere near them. So it's our way to safely see people right. and to get fresh air. Um, so that's one thing um, I feel can be done. Um, unfortunately, not everyone has luxury of having a beach, but I mean, even if you live in a metropolitan city, I feel like if you can, you know, take a walk downtown on a Sunday afternoon, if you don't have a, a bustling, you know, down, like we don't have a really bustling nightlife downtown Jackson on a Sunday afternoon doing that, um, going to a park. Um, so again, I feel like there are these open spaces that again, we take for granted, right. um, that, you're getting fresh air, you know, you're managing your distance and you, I always carry a mask with me no matter what. So in case we encounter a crowd, like, you know, you never know that jets and a sharks outbreak's going to happen and <laughs> my fight comes up. So I have my, my mask on just in case. Right. You know? So. Okay. Yes. <laughs> always, always gotta be safe. <laughs> That's right. All right. So, uh, that is, that is all the, basic questions that I do have, um, but okay. I but I hear you have someone you want us to meet, a friend? Yeah, I mean, so as you know, I back, I'm back to work full time, but I was working at home quite a bit, and so my neighbor had this really weird habit of popping by, and I feel like she knows my car's here, so she's going to, she typically comes by around this time in the evening, so I'm, in fact, hold on, I hear her knocking right now. Can you hold on for a second? Yeah, go ahead and I'll do another introduction. All right, looks like we're going to uh, meet Lyra's uh, neighbor. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, meet them now. Hello? Uh, wait. Uh, I, I don't... I, I, I don't know. Who, who is... Uh, uh, hi! Hi. 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 I, I, Lyra... I'm so sorry, Lyra. She said that there was someone here that I that I needed to see, I needed to meet. Uh, yes, I'm just uh, catching up with people... Uh, and seeing how they've been doing during the whole pandemic? Oh, well, first of all, I have to say right now, it's never been colder here in Florida. My God, I woke up, it was 56 degrees. Oh, oh, 56. And she, 56. Can you believe it? Oh, my. Oh, my God. And this crazy girl, Lyra, she's got her windows open like she's some sort of Arctic polar bear or something. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh. So, uh, I haven't been so cold since I've been to Georgia. <laughs> so uh, is, is, it, is it okay if I ask you about five questions real quick? Well, well, well I guess, because I, I told Lyra there was an incident happening outside. See, I'm also on, the, I'm on one of the committees here at the condo. Mm -hmm. you now, we have this new HOA board. I'm on the committee, so I'm, I'm watching for all kinds of infractions. I told her she needed to go outside and check around her car. I saw some litter around her car. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can knock these out real quick, and uh, then you can get out there to handle it. Okay, real quick, because these hooligans don't know anything but rules. They don't know rules. Okay, so uh, since the whole coronavirus started, uh, what changed in your day-to-day uh, -day process? Oh, my day-to-day my -day process? Well, I still watch, I still watch Kelly and Ryan... Um, I still eat my sandwiches. Well, you know what I do? Cause I'm retired, but I'll tell you what, what, what I, what I do with the, with the pandemic. Um, there are a lot of people here at the condo who are working from home and you're doing the zoom calls and the kids are doing whatever. And I'm just, I've got my eyes peeled. I've got my eyes peeled because first of all, we all know that idle hands are the devil's playground and these kids, they're on the zoom calls doing the work. But as soon as their parents are turning their back, I've seen them run outside and they're meeting up and they're getting on their, their scooters and skateboards. And it's like it's like a Grand Prix rally out here. I can't take a walk without getting my without my dog almost getting run over by these crazy kids. It's, it's not even safe. It's not safe. No, that's that's not fun at all. Uh, Before this virus, I could walk my dog. Let them crap in a yard in peace. I don't pick up because the crap is nature's fertilizer, okay? But I'm saying to you, not safe with these kids at home all the time, okay? Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, okay, so um, we're all home a lot more now. Uh, what do you like about being home so much? Oh, 
Well, what I like about it is, first of all, um, I like the fact that I can watch more people. You know, some people, um, they live here and they try to get a little sneaky with some of the things they do. I get to watch them more like a hawk. I actually bought some binoculars on um, Amazon. So I'm getting really good luck at these people. I'm going to be reporting them. I will say, too, um, I've actually found out about this thing called um, Instacart. Uh You can get groceries delivered. I don't even have to go to the store. Right. My groceries get delivered. I can actually pick up things from the Wally Mart, Mm -hmm. the Publix, um, uh, the Winn Dixie. It's crazy. I feel like I feel like I've won a lottery, but I mean, not. I mean, I'm on fixed income, but still, it's wonderful. Right. It's wonderful. I don't have to leave. It's great. Right. Right. Okay. So on the other side of that, is there anything that you dislike about being home so much? I don't like the fact that Lyra had to go back to work. Yes. Yeah, you know why? She's the one neighbor that I can count on to have my back in case something happens. I'm afraid to actually do any sort of, uh, um, I don't know, like jerky movements or anything unsafe. If I were to fall down and Lear's at work, who? Wh- what's going to happen? Oh. I don't know if I should call 911 because what if they don't have masks on when they come over? Uh, they they probably they probably do. It's probably definitely part of their protocol. You'd think, but I don't want to take chances. Oh. And that's what I'm saying is like that's one thing I I I don't I don't like. Lear's not home anymore and um, my bridge game has been canceled. I don't know how to work the, there's a virtual, I sure, people say you can do it virtually. I don't know. I don't get it, the whole thing. So I don't do that. Right. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I like, I, I, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's weird. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We are, we are in weird times. Yeah. Uh, so uh, think about uh, what are you missing more than anything right now? Honestly. Live music. Mm. I used to go to concerts. I used to, well, when I was younger, I used to go to a Steely Dan concert. <laughs> um, used to go see the Eagles. I used to see lots of great, I see you got a guitar. Uh, yes. In your room. You look like some uh, musician type. No, I can play like a few chords. That's about it. <laughs> uh. Don't be modest. I bet you girls are throwing themselves at you on the stage, aren't they? No, nope, just the one downstairs that I'm married you remind to. Remind <laughs> me of a young Don Henley. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Hotel California. <laughs> oh, that's what I miss to travel. I miss concerts and travel. Oh, right. I do. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a, a whole lot of sense. Okay, I got one more question. Oh, shoot away. Go ahead. Okay, so lots of things have opened up since well, nowadays. Uh, what do you feel is the safest thing for you to go do? Look out the window. Oh, so just... That's the safest thing for me to do right now. I would say look out the window. Um, check and make sure that, you know, everything's safe. And, um, you know, it... Actually, one other thing I think is probably safe to do, reading books. Yeah, yes. Reading books is safe as long as you're reading your own books because I don't want anyone's hands on my books. I would say reading books is probably safe as well as a nice glass of Pinot Noir. Oh, yeah. That's probably safe. So nice. As long as you stay in your house and you're not driving anywhere, I would say that's probably safe. So a nice book near a window with a glass of wine. Doesn't it sound like heaven? Oh, absolutely. With a nice little a labradoodle in your lap? Oh, absolutely. My dog's name is Shelly. Shelly the Labradoodle. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> She's a cuddle bug. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I just remembered. She's out oh oh. I have her leashed up to the stairs out there. Okay. All right. Um, do you have any more questions? Because I fear that maybe Lyra might be Get a little overwhelmed. I think I hope Shelly's not out there biting her, nipping her ankles. <laughs> uh, no, I'm actually done. But uh, is there anybody you would like to give a shout out to before you leave? Oh, you know who I'd love to give a shout out to? Um, first of all, the people at the public library, um, because I feel like they're not getting any visitors. 
Well, I think they're closed, but still, that's where I used to get my books before this whole thing went down. I love actually to give a shout out to V Pizza. Um, I love to get pizza from them. That's one place that I'll actually venture out to to go pick it up from the old window. Um, they do a lot of great work. They have a, a charity called V for Victory. It's for uh, cancer for kids. Well, not cancer to give kids, but you understand kids right, yes, cancer. Yes. Um, but they're a wonderful local company. They are actually also located in uh, um, North Carolina and Georgia, too, I think. Uh, they're expanding, but they're great. And I'd love to give a shout-out to um, <laughs> the Eagles. <laughs> Don Henley, if you're out there, <laughs> give me a call. I'm in Florida. It's nice and warm. Well, it's not warm today, but come out here. <laughs> come to the old Hotel Florida. <laughs> It's a muggy place. Nice. Um, it's a muggy place. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming on. Uh, we'll go ahead and bring Alara back and we'll finish the show out. Oh, good. Okay, cool. Because I've got to make sure that she's getting down the license plate because I'm sure there's something going on out there. Hold all on. Right, okay. All right, all right. So, uh, she was nice. She went too far out there. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and get uh, Lyra back and then uh, we'll finish the show. Hi. Oh my god, I, I, I am so sorry. Did you did you talk to my neighbor? She was she was she was here. We interviewed her. We're we're doing well. You interviewed her? Yeah. Oh, she's a mess. Oh. She's she's a hot mess. She 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 was not too bad today, I guess. Okay, I think the night she must be taking her meds. Well, I mean, I only had a deal with her for five minutes or so so well I, you can handle five some minutes. people that's five minutes too long for some people but she's got a cute dog shelly is a cute dog so now's the point in the show where we have the lightning round oh okay okay can i ask you five questions really fast you get uh one two maybe three word answers uh and uh if you answer them all correctly this video will still come out Saturday regardless. <laughs> okay. okay. It's no stakes. No all stakes right. at all. <laughs> oh. Wow. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Alright, ready? What's your favorite food? Uh, pizza. What's your favorite drink? Uh, Dirty Vodka Martini. What's your favorite place to visit? Uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Favorite movie? Amadeus. On a scale of 1 to 10, how fun is this interview? Uh, ooh, 9? I'll take a 9 every day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want you to reach. I want you to always be going for a higher mark there, so I can't give you a 10. Oh, I'm, I'm going to say 9. I've gotten, like, way over. <laughs> what? what is they broke the scale and say high numbers just, just a Are lot. Are you saying they've gone to 11? Is that what they did? Yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10? Yeah, they've gone to 11. Oh, wow. <laughs> a very spinal tap of them. All right, so that is basically the end of this uh, interview. Uh, is there anybody you would like to give a shout-out to? Now would be the time. Um, well, first of all, I want to give a shout-out to uh, my family, my brothers, Eric and Neil, my sister Karen, my beautiful sweet niece Jojo. I'm sorry I missed your ninth birthday. Which is a you know a landmark, sir. She's enjoying all her toys and her gifts and being a a good girl for her mom. Um, also, want to give a shout out to Mad Calford Improv, Spotlight Giant, um, Evening Chill, and more Cowbell. And um, really, I guess that's about. It. I want to what I want to give a shout out to Dr. Fauci. You know, no matter what happens. You're still the number one doctor in my book. I don't care if anyone fires you or not. I will always listen to your advice. I, I agree. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, so thanks again for coming on the show. Um, that's Thank it. you. Uh, I'm going to do a little outro, and then I'll be back with you. Okay. 
Hey guys, thank you for watching uh, today's episode. Uh, we will be back next week with another episode. Uh, while you're out there shopping and whatnot, uh, say thank you to all those people that have been working this whole time. Give a shout out to all the healthcare workers fighting this thing head on. And remember to drop the hate, spread some love. We're all one people. We'll see you next week, all right? Uh, peace.